Finally, truck buyers are starting to revolt. They're looking at the escalated pricing of the modern day pickup trucks and it's just turning them off. People aren't buying the vehicles like a lot of the big OEMs were planning. Ford has had made some major adjustments, GM's making changes, and Stellantis just can't make enough change in the RAM to entice the new buyers. So while Toyota's got some great new tech in the Tundra, as well as the Tacoma, all of these trucks are starting to feel a little bit like yesterday's news and people are just starting to catch on and getting tired of what the OEMs are providing and just not interested in what's out there on the market today. It's starting to show. They're not even the desirable models. A lot of them are clapped out, you know, higher mile RAV4s, things like that. Ford, for example, slashing their weekly output. They were talking 3,200 Ford Lightnings, gone. They're down to 1,600. They're actually slashing some of their workforce and reducing the capacity of number of people that are building those vehicles. Yet about what GM's doing. Lots of price incentives all over. You can walk onto their lots and you're finding lots of incentives with cash back, with a lot of opportunities for discounts, sales, knocks off MSRP. As well, we can't forget about it, but Stellantis, who literally have been running on the same old platform for the last how many dozen years, people are catching on. It's the same old song and dance. A lot of these manufacturers essentially rebadging the same old junk. It's almost like eating plain potatoes and unsalted hamburger every day, morning, noon, and night, the same old, same old after a while, you and I, we all get sick of it. I've seen trucks as high as $150,000, $160,000. I've seen Wranglers here as much as almost 140 grand, all before taxes. The Grand Wagoneers up about 140 grand. So aside from just raw incentives, people are still just not buying it. I mean, a lot of these vehicles are grossly overpriced. We're seeing a lot of these prices. They've come up 50% what they used to be. I mean, these are serious dollars. And a lot of people are looking at a lot of these pickup trucks and saying, I don't need leather interior and sunroof and four doors. Give me a good old fashioned cheapy truck. As a matter of fact, did you hear Toyota's got something looming? And then we're down here at the Toyota dealer here, locally and $10,000 bare bones truck. They're actually planning on potentially building something. They're starting to think ahead. Customers just want simple. That's right, Ford is in trouble. They can't seem to sell these trucks and SUVs and Ford F-150 Lightning is on an old platform, but it's not gold. That's right, it's essentially just rip out the guts of the drivetrain and drop in the new electrification. So essentially Lightning's nothing more than a glorified F-150. And then of course, these manufacturers keep jacking up prices. Which they're not secretive about, but people just getting tired of the song, same old song and dance. And so Ford's creating this new project, the Project T3, which is providing better performance, zero to 64 second, more frunk space, and a whole new platform and design that's a lot more fresh. For electrified vehicle supporters, it is offers up a competitor to the, obviously the Rivians and of course the Tesla Cybertrucks. Ford is trying to stay pace, but they also realize that we're not vesting fully in to electrified market. As a matter of fact, not only is Ford cutting 1,400 employees from the Rouge plant to back off on the electrified manufacturing, that they're realizing pickup truck owners and buyers are typically those that just like internal combustion engines. They like trucks that can go five or 600 kilometers. They like trucks that can do heavy duty work and not worried about plugging into a tree because they're in the middle of nowhere and they have no way to charge their pickup truck. They want internal combustion engine for as long as time comes. As a matter of fact, they're realizing that we're gonna have to staff up. They're actually hiring about 900 new staff members as well as transferring another 700 over to their internal combustion department. So the F-150s, because that's essentially what people are looking for. They're not looking for a Lightning. They want a cost-effective internal combustion engine. And the market is screaming for that. And that's how Ford is actually responding. Slicing and dicing the Lightning as people just aren't buying them. They're not as popular as they hoped they would be. And people just want plain and simple pickup truck for pickup tr pick truck duties. The sticker here we're looking at is a Super Duty. Uh, it's a 23 model year. So again, just like we saw with some of the other manufacturers, they're still dealing with 23 model years. Well, we're in 23, but you've got to know that by 24 is right around the corner, and they still have 23 model years. Now these are fleets, so they'll sell anyway. They'll probably go to rental companies or construction companies. This one here lists at 70, almost $78,000. Not cheap for basically a truck that has a basic 
thin carpet on there and cloth seats and the basics. Ford's had to pull a few other tricks out of their sleeve with deep price cuts, manufacturer incentives, as well as generous government incentives just to get it all done and get people in some of their modern day pickup trucks. In the meantime, Stellantis Ram, for example, are taking a slightly different approach. While they believe that they've got one up on the consumer, they're clearly not selling vehicles. Look at the modern car lots. You'll see Ram trucks lined up for the as far as the eyes can see, and they're not selling as nearly as quickly as they'd like to. Well, all manufacturers are selling pickup trucks, and a lot of people believe that, yeah, the truck market is stronger than ever. That's not entirely true. Yeah, vehicles are moving, but a lot of it has to do with incentives. A lot of these manufacturers are saying, here's your sticker price, but you know what? We'll offer up incentives. We'll throw in some widgets, some of the extras. But the bottom line is they're actually having to scrap some of their other models, like the Cherokee, as well as some of their lower level Jeep products to make up, to put all their money on the higher margin vehicles like the Ram. They're still putting, investing all their opportunities into Ram. And ironically, a poke in the eye to the consumer in the fact that Ram is and Stellantis are cranking their prices up even further showing that they're clearly disconnected from reality, clearly disconnected from what the consumer needs, and clearly disconnected what the economics is actually telling them with high interest rates looming and the fact that people are underwater on mortgages, loans, and people are starting to live in tents now. Never mind, you think they're out buying for a new Dodge Ram that's actually going up in price? That's right, there's some models that have gone up to $14,000 projected price tag for the next model year for these new Rams. Clearly out of touch. And then even GM is struggling. While they held strong and they actually had some great sales finishing up the fourth quarter in 2023, the unfortunate reality is they're suffering from quality control problems. You know, the cracked roof and the stop sale order of the Silverado as well as the Sierra because of structural issues on the roof of the vehicles. Don't let those lifter problems disappear on you. The 5.3 and the 6.2 and some of the lifter problems that they've been struggling with having to replace engines or even half engines heads or rebuilding part of the upper end of the engine has been a real problem for GM in the last few years some of their transmissions have been slightly problematic and as well have been in the limelight for many a recalls so GM has struggled with some of the quality control which obviously is going to be a problem and consumers are starting to catch on to that too and may start to shy away from some of these products Nissan and the Titan well that's another one for foregone news we know that one's disappearing coming up very very soon and so they're giving up up the ghost now as well we can't forget as i mentioned toyota they're sticking with the tacoma the small truck as well as the tundra which you have different combinations of v6 turbo engines we also have a little hybrid action on some of those and as well now they're coming out as i mentioned with a cost effective ten thousand dollar pickup truck potentially coming up soon now toyota is taking a slightly different approach as well they also are charging a premium dollar for some of their trucks nobody's going to deny that a lot of these tundras are significant amount of money but they're leaving Leaning on the coattails or standing on the coattails potential of the quality that the reputation that Toyota delivers. So at least if you're going to buy a truck that costs you a premium dollar, a lot of consumers say it's well worth it. Then at least I don't have a ton of quality control challenges like we're starting to see over on GM, Ford and the mega recalls that we're seeing Ford, as well as Stellantis and the old platforms with transmission issues, engine problems, and a lot of electronic digital issues throughout. Obviously, Toyota has that nailed down and the consumers that have that taste and they clearly want something that isn't going to fall apart or clearly going after the Toyota product line. I mean, with this bare bones $10,000 pickup truck that Toyota is developing, they developed the market. Thailand, for example, consumed about 145,000 of these in 2022. And clearly there's a strong market in that part of the globe. But the reality is for that 10 grand, you're getting a very basic vehicle. Very few rocker switches, very few controls, doesn't have a tachometer, no big infotainment system, and no screens. It's a very basic unit, Hilux per se. It's called the IMV0. Now, it's a very simplistic vehicle and a grassroots approach to actually buying a pickup truck. But again, it's a response to the need and the demand of the market. And manufacturers like Ram, Stellantis clearly don't get it while they're continually developing vehicles, trying to push their prices up, trying to promote themselves as more of a luxury brand and a manufacturer. That's only gonna lead to one place. And it's not good for the brand. Clearly, if a lot of these other manufacturers are starting to develop new, fresh products, they're going to have to also look at the pricing of this to be competitive. People just don't have the money. People are, in a lot of words, 
quite broke and a lot of people just don't have the cash or don't want to just out of principle to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a pickup truck just seems outlandish. Yes, a lot of these manufacturers are responding to what the consumers are doing, which is not buying as many trucks as they could be or should be. And so as a result, consumers are just done overpaying and manufacturers are saying, you know what, we better take another look at this. GM, again, lots of price incentives. Even the Ram, there's incentives. Even though they're hiking up the MSRP on a lot of their vehicles, brands like Toyota are giving you cheap options and Ford's trying to get creative as well as re reworking some of their manufacturing to provide the best bang for buck and deliver on vehicles that consumers are looking for, something fresh and something nice. But either way, let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on where the future market of pickup trucks is headed because clearly there is a response and there has to be a response to the fact that consumers are just getting tapped out. It's the straw that broke the camel's back. And above all, check that out right there. What's going on? Repossessions at an all-time high. Yes, not a lot of talk about it, but it's still happening. And while we're at it, do you know Ford is patenting an auto repossession tool? Just saying. Hope to see each and every one in the next one. See you real soon. Bye-bye.